For this last video in chapter three, I wanna take a look at modifiers. As an experienced artist, you're probably very familiar with modifiers, uh, albeit maybe not with the exact ones that blenders offer. And so I'm gonna take you through three of the main ones that will be used a lot, including the mirror modifier, the subdivision surface modifier, and the array modifier. The mirror modifier is exactly what it sounds like. You can access all modifiers by selecting your object and then choosing the modifier panel right here as the wrench icon and then choose add modifier. In the case of the mirror modifier, you can find it underneath the generate category and you can see that we have a lot of modifiers available and new ones get added from time to time. But the mirror modifier is found under the generate category and we can choose mirror. Now on my cube, by default, we're not gonna see anything. But if I hit tab to go into edit mode, right click to select one vertex and then move it around, you can immediately see that it's just being mirrored on top of itself. So let's just select the entire cube and we'll move it over along the x-axis so that we can really see what's happening. Within the mirror modifier, we have several different settings that we can adjust. Number one, we can mirror along any axis that we choose. So maybe I'll move this over or forward and up a bit as well to show this. So if I choose the axis here, by default it's along the x-axis. I can also mirror along the y and the z or any combination of the three. So this can be handy. We can also choose the clipping option, which then allows us to then just clip the object to the center lines. So this is good if you're working on a character or any other kind of symmetrical model that you do not want to have seams in the center, the clipping option works. The merge option just merges vertices within that threshold. And so it kind of works the same as the clipping option where it just makes sure that these vertices get merged together there at the center uh, rather than just simply sitting on top of each other. The vertex groups option also just allows us to mirror the vertex groups. So for example, I haven't actually talked about vertex groups yet, but you can find them from the object data panel. And if we were to add a vertex group here on this mesh, I could then mirror it across no problem by having this option enabled. We do also have the merge limit. So if I just start increasing this and merging it together, it should then grab those ones that are merging, as you can see there. Now I hit the limit there of one and I'm further away, so it's not grabbing the center lines, but it works as expected. We also have the option of merging the U and the V coordinates for the texture coordinates around the, the center point. And lastly, we also have the mirror object. So the mirror object is very handy because you can use any other object as the center point of your mirror. So if I leave edit mode, add in say an empty object and just position it somewhere arbitrarily over here, select my cube again and choose the mirror object as my empty, you can see it's then mirroring around that point. So this is handy if you wanna keep say a car wheel and keep its origin point right at the center of the wheel, but you want it to then be mirrored across in all directions, then you can have the empty here at the scene origin and it will work just like that. So deleting that. And then last couple of things about modifiers in general is with all modifiers, we have these settings up top. We obviously have the name of the modifier. We have the ability to toggle it down to save space. And then we have our visibility options where the visibility during the render, so whether to include the modifier while rendering, while showing it in object mode, whether to show it in edit mode. So if I disable this, it's not going to show in edit mode. And then lastly, what the apply the modifier cage during edit mode also allows me to do this, which then also lets me select any vertex from any portion of the mirrored object, just like so. Now, keep in mind that all transformations are still gonna be based on the actual cube here, but it does give you that option for better visualization in some cases. Next, we have the ability to move modifiers up or down if you have multiple modifiers. So for example, if I just add in say another mirror modifier here, I can then move these around quite easily if I want to reorder the stack because modifiers are applied from top down. So first this one, then this one, then on and so on. So the order does matter in many cases. I'll just delete that second one real quick. And then we also have the ability to apply or copy modifiers. Copy will just duplicate it and add a new one right below it. And apply will just make all of those changes real such that now I have all eight of my cubes here as actual individual cubes within my single object. Now I'm going to undo that. And let's now actually, we're just gonna delete that. I'm going to add in a new cube. 
and let's take a look at the subdivision surface modifier. So this one behaves exactly as expected. We have the option between Catmull Clark and simple subdivision. And we have the number, number of subdivisions here. So we can just increase the number of subdivisions within the viewport or the number of subdivisions during render time so that we can have a very simple mesh in the view or a complex mesh at render time. This is particularly handy if you're using any kind of such as a displacement modifier or something similar. You can let that feed off of this because if the displacement modifier or something else is after the subsurf modifier in the viewport then, or within the stack, it's going to use the values here as the actual mesh to then displace. We also have the option to subdivide the UVs or not and whether or not to display the optimal view within the viewport. This is for the wireframe display. So if I hit Z to go into wireframe mode, increase these subdivisions a lot, obviously you can see our mesh starts to get quite dense. Enabling optimal, optimal display will only display the original wireframe as deformed by the subdivision surface. So this can be handy for, again, simplifying your viewport display. So that's the subsurf modifier, quite simple and to the point, works exactly as expected. So now let's look at the array modifier. The array modifier, we can add via the generate category, choose array, and it works pretty much like expected. We have three different options for the fit type, whether to fit a, a fixed count, in this case, this count here, a fit length, where within we can just say the length to say 10 blender units, or you can fit a curve, at which point you then just choose the curve object with which to fit. And that can be handy if you're creating a chain or something like that, and you want the length to automatically change as you adjust the length of your curve. In this case, we'll just choose fixed count. Next, we have constant offset, relative offset, and object offset. The default is relative, and it's relative based on the mesh. So if I go in here, choose the relative offset of 1.71, hit tab to go into edit mode, and then choose this mesh or move one vertex, you can see that then is adjusting the length because it's basing the relative offset by the overall bounding box of the mesh. We can set this along any axis or combination of axes. If I uncheck that and choose constant offset, which by the way, you can mix these two if you wish, you can then set this constant where it'll just move an exact amount at all times, regardless of the size of your mesh. So this can be handy, particularly for doing evenly spaced things that need to be exactly spaced, and then you still want to be able to scale them as you go. And lastly, we have object offset. So object offset is very cool. Again, we can just use, say, an empty for this. So I'll just add in an empty. If I then point the empty to that object, and now move this empty, you can then use this as the object offset. This can be very handy for doing uh, complex array animations or anything like that, because if you then rotate this, this also takes into effect the orientation. So you can use this for creating a perfectly arrayed set of objects around a circle or a path or anything like that. Works quite simply. And lastly, we have two different options. Uh, we have merge and first and last. So if I go ahead and set a relative offset of one, zero, and zero. And if I were to then click apply, you can see that these vertices have been merged together. Now it does not have the ability to remove interior faces, but this, in this case, you, you know, you would simply delete these faces here, and then you would have a nice mesh after you applied that. We also have the ability to do first and last. So if this were going around in a circle, these vertices could merge with these vertices uh, if they were within close enough proximity. That proximity, of course, can be set via the distance option here. And lastly, we have start and end caps. So for example, if I go in here and duplicate this, remove the array modifier from it, and maybe I will just, uh, we'll just go in here. I'm gonna fill this face. I'm gonna extrude the face, scale it up, and then maybe uh, we'll just leave it like that. And if I now set that, as my start cap, it's cube two, you can see exactly what's happened. It's basically started it uh, at this point, connected it to that point, and allows me to then fill that off. So you could actually have an arrayed column with the interior portions of the column like this being your array, and then have an individualized start cap and end cap to then create a more complex surface 
that is still very controllable. So perhaps maybe you have a column that's then set up to follow the length of a curve to then allow you to adjust the height of the column dynamically without ever having to move the starter end cap or anything like that. So it works quite simple. The main thing to note is the origin point and, it, and the connection points at which to start it. So your start and end cap should be filled within the same space as your original arrayed object or the offset will not necessarily work. For example, if I were to move this over here, maybe like we would expect it, something like that, it's actually going to be offset like so. So just something to keep in mind. But that's the array modifier. Like I said, we have many other modifiers available. Shrink wrap for shrinking directly to another mesh. Remesh for quickly generating a new uh, simplified mesh. Screw, skin, etc. Many others. Actually, let me go ahead and show you the skin modifier real quick. The skin modifier is very quickly or very cool because it allows us to generate a quad only base mesh very quickly. It's similar to Z spheres in ZBrush. And I'll just do it by adding in a mesh plane and I'm gonna delete all these vertices to just give me a blank mesh. We'll add in a skin modifier and then I can just control click and control click again and it will start adding in these points. Now I can then select this, click mark as root and that is then my root point and now you can see these are just generating a skin around them. I can extrude across, create any kind of complex mesh. This does work with a mirror modifier. So if I were to bring this to the center, maybe I'll add in a mirror modifier beforehand and it works perfectly. Just let me add in clipping like this and like this. And you can see it's generating those quite quickly without having any uh, overlapping geometry. We have the ability to uh, mark loose or clear loose, which will just give us a slightly looser transition between the two. We can set whether it has smooth shading or not, any branch smoothing like this, and equalize radius because you can also select individual vertices and hit S or uh, control A will adjust the radius of any individual point. So this allows you to create very simplified base meshes very quickly for sculpting or anything else of the sorts.